name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The people witnessed something that was beyond their imagination, beyond any possibility that this would ever take place, that a dead man is raised back to life after four days. Many people witnessed this event, and they saw in Jesus something, but they could not figure out exactly what the something was. And then soon after, as Jesus rides into Jerusalem on a colt, Hosanna is shouted, the king. Now, they did get it right, but at the same time, they didn't get it right. Yes, Hosanna, as they were shouting at the top of their voices with great jubilance, great joy, great hope, great expectation that this Jesus is going to transform our situation into something really good. And what is that going to be? He's going to restore Israel to its former glory. He will be the king. And he will unite all the oppressed that has been under the thumb of the oppressors for centuries and restore them to freedom and give us sovereignty that we, and a nation that we were looking forward to for centuries. Yes, they got it right, he is king, but they got it wrong in terms of in what way the king would express and establish his kingdom. The king that they were looking forward to was a king who would, with his might, conquer the enemies that they were facing. But this king, in reality, would be doing even far more than that. He would be conquering death by his death, the ultimate freedom, the ultimate joy, the ultimate bliss, and all the other ways that you can describe this glory that the Lord was bestowing upon us. Yes, a sharing in his very life, which also includes his very death, but also includes his very resurrection. Now, we can see those people back then, how they got it right, but then they didn't exactly get it all right. Yes, he is a king, but not the kind of king that they thought he would be. And I think it's an invitation for us to look at our own walk with Christ as we enter Great Week. Do we have expectations of the Lord? Do we project out of ourselves what we would like the Lord to do and be? For instance, we may be praying for something that is very important to us, or we may be actually just praying uh, one of our, a, a prayer during the course of the day. And in that case, maybe we're not feeling anything. Maybe we're just reading words, it seems. Or it seems like things seem a bit stale. Like I'm praying, but nothing seems to be happening. I'm not feeling anything. On the other hand, we may be praying to the Lord for some need or whatever it may be. And it seems like we're not getting an answer. In fact, it seems like the Lord is positively deaf to our prayers. But yet, we continue to pray, don't we? Do we give up and say, what well, doesn't seem like he seems absent? Where is he? Am I just speaking into the air? And this is where the event of Palm Sunday that we celebrate today, I think, really becomes relevant to our lives today. The people there had an expectation of who Christ would do and who Christ is. They had already in their mind, this is the Christ who's going to, as I explained earlier, take us on to victory. But it would be through the way of the cross that they weren't really ready to accept. 
But there were those who called for his crucifixion, who saw him as an enemy of all that they stood for. And even there they got it wrong. So then the question comes, in our prayer, in our daily life, in our daily walk with Christ, what do we expect of Christ? Who is Christ? And it seems like our feelings sometimes fail us and fool us because the very Lord who we feel absent or the very Lord who we feel he's not listening to my prayer or the very Lord who says, you know, there's an urgent need here, Lord. What are you doing? Why are you waiting so long to respond to this crisis or whatever form that takes? But the reality is he is there, and he is present, and he is transforming what we are asking for, but in ways that we don't understand or comprehend or, or even his timing, for that matter, or even the ways in which he brings total good out of total evil. We can't wrap our brain around that. It's impossible. And so that's why we have to go before the Lord, and I say have to, to take him at his word. So then the question is, in the Gospels, when we read about Jesus, do not be afraid, I am with you always. Whatever you ask in my name will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Ask, you will receive. All those things. Do not worry about today. All those things our Lord is saying to us. Be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Do we take the Lord at his word? Do we? I, I think that's the question. And that's where we, we can kind of harken back to a few Gospels ago, a few Sundays ago, when the father of the young boy who was suffering torment, asking the Lord for healing, and the Lord kind of confronted him on his unbelief. And he says, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. And I think sometimes that's the call that our Lord is calling us to say, you know, even if we have these doubts, we can go before the Lord just as we are and say, hello, Lord, are you there? We can be ourselves with the Lord. And that's the good news about our relationship with the Lord that our expectations, or what we think the Lord is supposed to do, trumps, in a sense, what, as I see things, in reality, the Lord is seeing a wider vision than we can ever do. Then it becomes, Lord, I don't know what you're up to, but I have to trust you in this. And if I don't, help me trust you. Show me the way. So once again, we can be ourselves with the Lord in, in our walk. And so the Lord today, as he rides into Jerusalem, and we're going to journey through Holy Week with him, during Great Week, as we journey with the Lord, let us truly journey with the Lord. And let us bring whatever we have within us on that journey whatever that is, whatever our concerns, whatever, whatever it is. It could even be thanksgiving and gratitude. It could be, Lord, help me in my struggle. Whatever it is, let us accompany the Lord on this journey. Because I mentioned before, bear with me, that the resurrection does not happen after the cross. The resurrection is in the cross. The Lord is working in our lives in ways we can't notice, perhaps, by our senses. But the Lord is present. That's what he promised. And since the Lord is the way, the truth, and the life, then the Lord calls us to commend ourselves to him, to put all of ourselves, our body, mind, and spirit, into his hands, and allow the Lord to do with us as he will. Because in this, a prayer could be, as you will and as you know best, Lord, 
have mercy on me. The blessing of the Lord be upon you through his grace and love for mankind, always, now and ever, and on to the ages of ages.